Welcome to Let's Go Live Writing Sprints. I know it's been a couple weeks since I did these because Hamilton released last week. <coughs> right? Yeah, last week. Oh my gosh, it's only been a week. Feels like longer. And so Hamilton released last Friday. Yay! Because that book has given me just like anything that could go wrong has gone wrong with that book. And it has been just um, quite the learning process. And so Hamilton released last Friday. It was also Labor Day weekend here in the US. And so I took off last Saturday. And then I think I took off the Saturday before, but I don't even remember why. Maybe because of my car, I don't know. Anyway, so welcome back. I'm glad to have you guys. I think that we may have a couple people tuning in. Hey, EB, good morning. Are you joining me on the live, EB? Let me know. So EB's out of California. I don't know if she's going to join us on the live or not. And then I have an author, Sienna, out of Australia. This is like 12 midnight for her, so I don't know if she's going to be able to join either. I see your little hand, your wave. Okay, are you joining or are you just going to be in the comments? Let me know. And then um, <clears throat> Omni is in Bahrain, and I don't know if she's joining or not, so we'll have to see. <laughs> oh, that's so cute, EB girl. I'm still in bed in my pajamas. That's so sweet that you dialed in, though, because I have to admit, if I was still in bed with my pajamas, I'd be cozy up with a uh, book and not um, on the live. <laughs> hey, Sienna. I'm barely cognizant. I get that. I slept in today. We had, like, a really bad rainstorm. Well which was great because we have been in a drought since January 6th. And so it was wonderful to be able to sleep in, but I wish we had more rain because it basically looks like it didn't rain at all because we're so such in a drought. <laughs> Sienna, you're in your PJs as well. I was wondering, Sienna, if you're going to join me on the screen. I know that you always join these lives in the comment section, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> PJ Club Unite. <clears throat> I know, because for Sienna, it's midnight. And I think, EB, you said it is uh, 9 a.m. there. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so what are you guys working on? I, like I said, I got Hamilton launched, and now it belongs to the world. Molly and Hamilton's story belongs to the readers. I'm so excited to have that done. And so Isla is the next book in that series, but that won't come out until 2024. There's like a lot of uh, trauma and I want to make sure I get that book right because I've been consulting with two domestic violence victims and because her book will be domestic violence. And so I want to make sure that I tell the story as accurately as possible. And so part of that is kind of outlining um, narcissistic behavior and how it happens so kind of you know it starts with like a push or a shove and then what is the whole course of abuse and when you finally get to the end and you know she leaves or something happens to her that forces her to seek refuge elsewhere so anyway that book is going to take me a little bit longer because I want to do that story justice and make sure I get it right um, and I have been blessed with these two wonderful ladies that uh, do not mind sharing their story and insights, which I think is amazingly strong because um, they are overcomers for sure. Sienna, you're going to finish the last two chapters of the fantasy I've been working on. Ooh, I know we talked about that. I don't think you have a release date yet. Is that correct? EB, early rise is a struggle. I need to catch up because I am behind thanks to COVID. Uh, I know, and needing a mental break. And COVID is, uh, there's that COVID fog is legit real. I know my sister, I've had COVID three times, vaccinated, boosted, you name it. But um, my sister has had COVID fog too, so. Sienna, yeah, not yet. So you don't have, oh, thanks for the love, babe. So you don't have release date yet. How many, how much longer do you have to go in writing it? And how long does it take you to write a book? Like what's your word count when you're completed? And then how long does that usually take you? I always find that fascinating. Some people 
are such fast writers. I was talking to an author and she has little ones, like, you know, toddlers, babies. So when they go down for a nap, she said that she has basically, one is a good sleeper, one is not. So she basically has about 20 minutes and she can write a thousand words in 20 minutes. And I'm like, holy hell, man, that's a lot. This one's about 30,000. Let me put on my glasses. Girl, let's see, 30,000. Oh, okay, so is 30,000 considered a, what do they call it, a novella? Or a novelette? I can't remember the terms. Oh, you have 30,000 more to go. I'm confused. Evie, how are you feeling? Are you getting back to better? Um, one thing I have to warn you, there is such thing as COVID hair, and uh, it affected me, it affected several people that I know, and it's where you have hair loss two or three months after you have COVID. It's the strangest thing. Okay, it's a short story, Sienna said. Maybe I don't remember which it's called and don't ask me any specific questions. I know it's too early and for Sienna, it's too late. So, um, okay, so Sienna, I'm kind of fascinated by your short story of 30,000 because I am starting a new series. I need a palette cleanser because obviously the Canyon series between Danny, Tomlin, Hamilton, Isla. It's very dark and it has, um, you know, issues that affect women worldwide. And so I always have a lot of research. It kind of takes like a lot of emotional, I don't want to say like emotional toll to write the story, but you just want to make sure you do it, you know, tell the story um, correctly. And so as like a palate cleanser to that dark series, I'm starting a new series and it's so, fluffy and frivolous and you know definitely not any kind of darkness that I have in my dark series so anyway that series um, is going to be probably like 42 anywhere from 40 to 45 thousand words so the idea is that I can just put out a book a month just as a palate cleanser while I work on Isla's big story so I'm kind of I would love to know where are you going to publish your 30,000 short story? If it'll be like on Kindle Unlimited or if it'll be on Amazon or why? Yeah. <coughs> Maybe. I don't know if I can write a story that's short. I always find more to write about. Um, it's good to have a lot to read. You know, that's so true. Okay, so I have to tell you, it's been quite a struggle because if you've read my books, I'm very verbose and wordy and I want to like unpack all the trauma and then bring in the love and just, you know, I just like dig through it all. And so I'm working with a developmental editor um, on this series because I've been working, trying to match a beat sheet. I've never done a beat sheet before. That's not true. My first novel, I worked with a dev editor. We had a beat sheet. <clears throat> but this one, I don't know how to get all the romance beats in such a small word count quantity. And so... I have been working the last two weeks, like the week of Hamilton's launch, and then this this week on finding a romance beat sheet for that short of a word count that makes sense, that covers all the beats, that doesn't get too much fluff in there. Because EB, I'm like you, I don't know how to um, I don't know how to like say less and it mean more. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. So she's been great, and so she just sent me my updates last night, and she's like, you know, I've been having all sorts of insecurities, like, I don't know if I can do this, I don't think that'll make sense. So she's been, like, part um, therapist and then part dev editor <laughs> to try and get this first book done. I want to launch it in October, and then I'll have, like, October, and I want to do, like, a little sexy Santa in uh, December, and so I feel if I can get this beat sheet down for this smaller word count, it's more... Uh, formula based then I'm off to the races or at least that's the theory behind it so anyway <clears throat> yeah so Sienna you found it harder to write that small too <clears throat> excuse me you know allergies is always it's the anthology so there's like five to six in each book 
Okay, you've been having what vibes as well? I do have that anthology. I'm not participating on the, I think it's the 2024 anthology with you guys. <clears throat> but I did sign up for the 2025 anthology. I haven't even started. Some people have already started and they have all these words and I'm like, oh, what's the theme or what's the topic again? Couldn't even tell you. So that's not good. I'm kind of behind on that too. <clears throat> okay, so are you guys, well, AB, I know you're in bed, so you're probably not sprinting. Oh yeah, doubts about writing. <clears throat> Jeez. Um, Sienna, do you, are you working with someone like a beta or an alpha or someone that could like look over your work? And um, how this started with this dev editor, she's on my street team. She's written, she's read all my books. She's a huge like hype girl on my street team. And so she's been wanting to get into developmental edits, developmental editing. And so she reached out and she says, hey, you know, would you be interested? And I was like, oh, heck yeah. Um, my original dev editor is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. She's been doing it for about a decade. However, she's booked until mid-2024. And if I would get my act together, my publishing schedule, then I could probably get on her calendar. But um, <laughs> anyway, I don't have my act together and I'm not on her calendar. So when this other uh, reader who's launching her developmental edit business reached out, I was like, this is a match made in heaven. Because she knows my writing style and she knows like kind of the pitfalls of what I struggle with and being too verbose. <laughs> okay, so E.B., you're not sprinting with us, but I know you're here in, on the comments. That's so sweet. And then Sienna, are you sprinting today? Because I can get everything ready. And I do have a hard stop at 1230 today. Just because I have kiddos in the house. And they like to be fed. Shocking. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh. Way, way off. Way, way off. Is that better? There we go. I'll probably catch the next one. Yeah, AB. You know you're always welcome, of course. Okay, Sienna, you are a sprinting, so. Let's go ahead and start up if you can see that. 25 minutes, and then I'll start and then we I'll mute my line. Okay, so good luck. Here we go. Start. I don't even know how to mute it. There we go.
Hello, we're back. Don't want to be too loud in case you guys are still finishing up writing. Anyway, I did, I've been editing because I am working on that um, first book in this series. And so when I sent it over to my dev editor, she's like, some sections are too long. Like I have two scenes at a bakery that are like, I think like 3000 words and that's way too long, but I just love all those words. So anyway, I have to look to cut those down because if it's a 40,000 word series, that's almost 10% of the book. And so she's like, the scene isn't that critical. Like we get it, we get the message. So um, anyway, I've been having to like cut the that scene back and then I have another one where they meet at a restaurant. And so she's like, that one has to be cut back too. And so, which is helpful to have someone who's in the story with you who can be constructive and say like, hey, you got a little bit too much fluff here. Because I think as authors, we get to like loving all of our words. And so cutting them is like super hard. <laughs> all good. So Sienna, what did you get done? Are you writing or are you editing? I think you said you're writing. Is this your first 30,000 word sh short story or novel? I'm curious. And trimming down can be hard. I know. See, Evie, you understand. Oh, you got 600 words in. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, I'm having to cut mine. So what I've been doing is just like when I have to cut something out, I save it in a document. So that way I'm like, if I ever want to use it somewhere else. I've only written one book. That's okay. Do you know, like, I think that it says 90% of people want to write a book. 3% actually do write the book and 1% actually publish it. So I think that's awesome, Sienna, that even though you said, I only have one book, you have one book, which is more than most people. This is the second. Is it the second book in the series? Or um, there's an author who's doing like a little, I thought this was interesting. She's doing like a little novella series. So she has her main series with her cast of characters. And then she's also putting out a novella series with those same cast of characters, but all these different like side stories. And I thought, ooh, that is so creative. I think her world is called Nelsonville. And I cannot think of her name right now, Christina. It escapes me. But I thought, wow, that is a lot. Like to live in that world, right? We all want to live in the world with our characters. But to just have that many stories that you can write and tell with the same cast of characters, I find that to be like fascinating. So I need to start reading her series to see how she does it because um, I think some people can do that really, really well. And then that's another thing that we can learn from. So. Now this is fantasy, but Angels of Fury 2 will be finished before the end of the year. Okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you have almost two series, or do you have your main series, which the Angels of Fury 2 will be the second book, and then this 30,000 word, is it gonna be its own series, or is it a like side story for your main series. It's so interesting how different authors take different journeys, like the different paths. Like there's, I feel like there's like no right way to do anything. There's like several ways to do everything. And you just got to figure out like what way works for you. Finished or published? Oh, it's a standalone. Okay, so you want to get into a different world, a different cast of characters. Sometimes I want to do that. I have more ideas than I do of the fantasy. Yeah, sometimes I have more ideas than I have hours in the day, which is a good thing. And when people talk about using AI, I'm like, I just wanted to download my brain. <laughs> because I already have like the books written up there. I just can't get them out fast enough. 
yeah. Okay, are you guys ready? I don't know if we talked for five minutes or if it's been, but um, are y'all ready for another writing sprint? We can get that going. It's been so quiet today. I'm like, what is everybody doing? Because I feel like not very many people are active on social media today. When I went live, you know how it shows you how many of your followers are on? There wasn't that many followers. There was only like 80 followers that were active at the time. And so I think I have like, I don't know, 1,500 or something like that. So that's not very many people. I have about five books from Angel of Fury in my head. Man, that's awesome. My books is so good. You know, people always think like, oh, I'm going to have writer's block or I'll, I'll run out of things to write about. But obviously you won't, Sienna. My books is a lot. Yep. Yeah, it's really great that she has ideas. I feel like inspiration can come from anywhere, right? It's like conversations. Ah. Uh, Maybe. You got your document open? Are you going to write with us? Are you going to sprint? Hopefully. Or edit. How are you coming on your edits? I know you had that humongous binder full of edits. It seemed a little daunting <laughs> to me. Um, I know my characters talk too much. What a great problem to have though, right? I loved books that are heavy in dialogue. I know some people like like heavy description or heavy world building, um, but I like heavy dialogue. Yeah, I'll be editing, I need to catch up. The binder is done. Well, congratulations, because that binder, <laughs> when you showed us that a few, what, last month, that thing was thick and uh, had a lot of work, a lot of a lot of work to it, so yeah. I know I like heavy dialogue too. I think I told y'all last time that I had a review and someone was like, there was too much dialogue. I was like, what? There's no such thing as too much dialogue. <laughs> you have another binder though? What is your other binder? I thought you were just doing your read through. Do you do your read through where, what is a binder? Mm. She has where she printed out her full manuscript and then went by hand and edited it on paper. And so she showed us um, several weeks back with this huge binder she held up and then opened it and had like all her, you know, edits and her different colors that she had to do on her main document. Yeah, so it was pretty intense. Oh, so you have another binder for the next book. Is that like your mm, book Bible or your planning, like your plotting? <laughs> I know. Sienna, it was, oh my God, because I feel like I did print out my first book and did it hand form. Oh, that was daunting. But I feel like you see the um, errors better. I feel like you're not blind to them. They stand out more, but... It's a, it's a big commitment and it can be overwhelming, kind of daunting. Just paper edits. I don't understand. Your other binder is going to be all your paper edits? Hmm. Interesting. Hey, Anna. <coughs> oh. There could be a squirrel passing by. Who knows? Anna just joined us and I went live with her on a few weeks back and so they're going to be like a writing team. They're kind of, um, well, Anna is starting into the bookstagram world and she's going to be doing some services. So I'm going to have her and her aunt on, Anna, is it October or November? Something like that. E.B. Since I edit my own stuff, I have to do it several ways. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paper, read out loud to myself, read out loud to someone else. Mm, that's true. And yeah, October is when we're going live. Don't you have to write it in? 
Yeah, so Sienna, when you saw her big binder, she had handwritten in her changes, and then she has to go to the document and then put them in, you know, all her electronic documents, so, yeah. You know that read out loud? Um, I use Microsoft and they have that feature, read aloud. I mean, the voices are terrible, absolutely terrible, the computer generated. But you really can hear your mistakes. They stand out pretty, pretty obviously. Typing them in isn't that bad, actually. It goes really fast. I could do 30 pages in 25 minutes. Woo! Okay, so Evie, maybe you need to be setting up editing services. <laughs> what do you mean you can touch type? Is it on the um, touch type? Is that on like a um, screen? You're going to touch the screen? I read out loud too. Yeah. Yeah. I try to do read aloud. They're good because they can catch mistakes, but sometimes I'm just behind on my deadline and then I can't do read alouds. From your MacBook. Oh, I'm on a Mac. They have that website called um, Natural Voices, but I think you have to pay so much for per word, but their voices are more normal. They're not like weird robots. Oh, that means I don't have to look at the keyboard to type. Okay, so Evie, um, that's how we were supposed to be learning in typing school like 30 years ago. They're like, don't look at your keys. And so I wish I had done that, but I didn't, and I didn't learn how to type. And now, you know, like typing is critical. Um, my mom, back in the day, she was a secretary before she became an insurance agent, and she could type. She did shorthand too but she could type 120 words a minute. It was crazy to watch. She did a lot of dictation and translation for um, in the oil and gas industry. <laughs> they covered your hands with paper when I was learning. We must have had the same teacher. She was, um, she would come by and slap your knuckles with the, um, with the ruler. And it was not Catholic school, it was public school. I didn't left school at 14. Yeah, not every page needs extensive edits. See, that's good. I know, sometimes I feel like my writing is on a roll. Like sometimes it's like really, really good and clean. And then I can tell when I have written when I've been tired because, oh, there's a lot of red and blue on the screen. We talked about that, EB, how I just like live with the red and blue and you're like, I gotta go back and correct the red and blue because it drives me crazy. But I'm not like that. <laughs> I'm like, eh, I'll clean it up in editing. Anyway, okay. I can't type that fast anymore because, oh, carpal tunnel. Okay, you're at 120 as well. Dang, you guys were flying across those keys. There are programs you can use to learn. Yeah, I should do that. I really just try to move into um, dictation just because I can talk faster than I can type anyway. So, if I'm gonna learn anything, I want it to be like a foreign language or the piano. Both are on the bucket list. Okay, are you guys ready to do our last writing sprint? I know we're only gonna do two today just because I have that, you know, I got that time crunch with the kiddos. So if you guys are ready, Gladiator's ready, yeah, definitely do a foreign language. See, E.B., the sad thing is I took four years of French, <laughs> and I can only say, like, je vais à la plage, which is I'm going to the pool, or la, la bibliotheca, which is I'm going to the library. So silly, such a waste. So, okay. So we'll start it 25 minutes and then we'll do our wrap up afterwards. So good luck. Here we go.
Alrighty. How did you guys do? I finished. Of course. That, that of course, Bulldog has to start barking, but um, so I edited. I think like two chapters and I ended up cutting out 1300 words so um, that's kind of more than I thought and I'm super sad but oh this works out perfect because we're about to wrap up the dog is barking and the landscaping crew just showed up so I don't know if you can hear them but it's gonna get pretty noisy here so I hope that you guys were able to get some words in and oh Cassie's your editing also. Are you cutting words? I'm having to cut words because I'm over my word count um, already. <laughs> According to my beat sheet and uh, what me and my dev editor have been working on. Yes, I can hear them. I know, right? So they are late. This is like the neighborhood. And so they normally are here by um, 10 and that's why I go at 11. And I guess they're late. So now they're here. You got 400 words. That's great, Tiana. Well, I'm gonna sign off because I feel like we got abbreviated with them showing up. I got distracted, but I could hear the dog breathing earlier. <laughs> I know he, you can hear him shuffle in, you can hear him breathing. I had to get up to let him out. I was like, this clown, this kid right here. Can you hear him? He's literally like, if I could show y'all, he's like literally right, like right there. Anyway, but, <laughs> You guys have a wonderful Saturday, a great rest of your weekend, and then let's try and do this again next Saturday, burying any of my dog or my landscaping crew showing up. <laughs> oh yeah, he's uh, he loves himself. He is his favorite. He is the English Bulldog, and he's 70 pounds, and he's supposed to be losing weight, but um, that hasn't really been happening, so. Yes, yeah, Sienna. Now, yeah, exactly. Sleep time. Now you get to go to bed because I think it's what, one thirty a.m. where you're at. So, anyway, you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and I will catch you in the D DMs. All right, ciao for now.